How many roads you've traveled How many dreams you've chased Across sand and sky and gravel Looking for one safe place Yeah, yeah, yeah. One safe place Will you make a smoother landing When you break your fall from grace Into the arms of understanding Looking for one safe place Yeah, yeah, yeah. One safe place trial by fire And love's the sweetest taste And I pray it lifts us higher Sand and sky and gravel Looking for one safe place Yeah, yeah, yeah One safe place Yeah, yeah, yeah One safe place Yeah, yeah, Lord of all, we come together in celebration this week, taking pride in who we are, whatever our gender expression, whomever we love. We join with our siblings in this community of pilgrims, made in many different ways, a diverse collection of your children drawing alongside one another to share fellowship with each other and to worship you. All are welcome here. All are accepted here. All are allied with here. We rejoice at the opportunity to celebrate the many ways we reflect different aspects of you, God, and we embrace the message of inclusion woven throughout your gospel this Pride Month and always. Amen. And get in the whole rainbow. Yeah. Welcome again to this sacred place, this holy ground, as real to us as any church building. Our home is here on YouTube, 
on Twitter and on our website. Online is where we live and have our being. These are places of welcome, open to all, and we mean all. Stay for as little or as long as you like. Be as involved or not as you feel comfortable being. Many of us that gather here were unable to access physical church even before the pandemic. And here we have been made welcome and have found a home. This is our space. Come on in and join us. We dedicate this space to those who have been excluded for loving someone in a way that has been judged wrongly. To those whose personhood has been challenged wrongly. To those who have been made to feel unworthy. And today especially, to those who do not have the freedom to celebrate pride in their home country for fear of persecution, punishment or even death. Father, take this place and those gathered here and make this a place of hope, a place of encouragement, a place of refuge, a place of pride and a place of peace. Amen. To those who are new here, we say, welcome. To those who are familiar faces, we say, welcome. To those who are confident of their place here, we say, welcome. To those who are unsure if we will really include everyone, we say, welcome. To those who have been hurt by bad theology and harmful pastoral practices, we say welcome. To those who never thought they would find an inclusive faith environment, we say welcome. To those who join us at a later date, time, you are welcome. And above all, Jesus, we welcome you into our presence. This is your temple, Lord. Although there are no walls, the web is where we gather, as real to us as any church. Computers, phones, and tablets are our prayer books. Our prayers float in the ether like incense across the sanctuary. Fellowship comes in many forms, and ours is here, online. Let us take a few moments to consider the times when we have not acted as we would have liked this week, for the times we have not understood the needs of others or ourselves. We say, God, forgive us, for the times we have not been able to keep our manners or our tempers. We say, God, forgive us, for the times we have not been able to share or receive, we say, God, forgive us. For the times we have not recognised or challenged our inherent prejudices, we say, God, forgive us. For the times we have not kept scrolling and kept out of the argument, we say, God, forgive us. For the times we have not invited you into the centre of our lives, we say, God, forgive us. 
in asking your forgiveness, gracious God. Help us to be transformed, that we might live as people of your kingdom, following your way and trusting your wise counsel. Open our hearts, Lord, to the warmth of your love. Amen. Though we are far apart, let us find a closeness. Let us reach over the rainbow, unite us across time and space. Teach us to be alone, yet together. Though we are socially distant, let us feel your touch, the warmth of your love enfolding us. Jesus, as we reflect on this Pride Month, remembering all those who sacrificed so that we may live in a more open and inclusive society, we thank you for your gift of the Holy Spirit to all. Not just a select few, not just the Jews, but to Gentiles, Romans, slaves, all. May we be champions of that message of your love for all today. For this space where we can express our emotions in safety, we thank you. For a service we are able to attend easily, we thank you. For people who understand, we thank you. For a place where we feel safe, we thank you. God of light, a light that breaks through the darkness, a light that penetrates all hidden corners, a light that came to us through a little child born in Bethlehem. We have followed your star and it has brought us here. May we continue to search diligently for him each day so that we may offer our lives to you in joy and thanksgiving. Teach us a new song, Lord, a song for those who go unsung. Praise the ones that do our dirty work, the pushers of chairs, the wipers of bums, the makers of tea, the givers of meds. Teach us that new song, Lord, that lets them know they are loved. The ones who put their own dreams on hold, Lord, that give until they are spent. The ones who go unnoticed, Lord, quietly meeting our needs, yet keep us rolling along. Teach us to say thank you, Lord, for every ounce of care. God, now let us bring before you those we know of in need of you at this time. In a moment of silence, we hold them before you and ask your blessing on their lives. Those who cannot see, he walks with his guide. He whispers softly to those who cannot hear. He soothes those whose minds are troubled. He rides with those who cannot walk. He sees the pain of those whose pain cannot be seen and brings insight to those who appear not to understand. God of hope, Bring us love that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought joy into the world, 
be the joy that dwells between us. Hebrews 13, 7 to 12. Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. For it is well for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by regulations about food, which have not benefited those who observe them. We have an altar from which those who officiate in the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore Jesus also suffered outside the city gate in order to sanctify the people by his own blood. Hello everybody, my name is Jeremy Pemberton and thank you very much today for inviting me to speak to you for this Pride service. Uh, I'm speaking to you out of my garden office and it's the best place for me to record this. I'm sorry about the books, I know you're not supposed to have books but hey, there we are, I've got books. About ten years ago I was in London with my now husband and we'd been out for the evening and we were travelling back to where we were staying and we went down into the tube and we got on the escalator to go down to the platforms. Now those escalators were, it's one of those big long ones that just goes on forever and it was pretty empty. And then suddenly the upper elevator started to fill up with a lot of people who'd just come off a train and up they were coming. And as we went down, we could see a man coming up who was starting to get really agitated and he was jigging about and he was thumping the rail and then when we got within shouting distance, he started to scream at us. He said we were effing homos and perverts and we deserved to burn in hell and he was going to come and kill us. And he sort of almost tried to climb across between the two sets. He couldn't do it, but that's what he was wanting to do. And it was all very perturbing and rather worrying. I thought he might try and run round the, ele the, the top and come down the elevator to get at us. And as he passed by uh, and was carried on towards the top, other people told us not to take any notice, not to worry about it. And uh, that was and that was very nice of them. But it didn't entirely remove the shock. And what that was the most significant thing for me. It was the shock of being abused like that. We'd done absolutely nothing. No public display of affection, nothing inappropriate, nothing at all. We were just abused for existing. And I'm sure that many people with protected characteristics, many of you watching this morning, will have stories to tell like that, of being abused because you exist, of having your humanity fundamentally threatened and disrespected, mothers who breastfeed, disabled people who take longer to do things in shops, who are mocked, or people who are impatient with them, or old people who are assumed to be stupid because they're slow, people of colour, victims of Islamophobia or anti-Semitism, trans people being beaten up, the list goes on and on. Well, Pride Month is a very important time for LGBTI plus people because it's the time when we say to the world that we deserve to be treated equally and that we deserve and claim equal respect with any other group in society. Of course, society isn't equal, it never can be. Uh, if I check my privileges, then I know I was privileged from the moment I was born. But we labour to build as just and open a society as we can so that everyone has a chance to flourish and develop and share their gifts. So while pride is especially about sexuality and gender minorities, it can stand as a symbol of something that we want for everyone. 
Some of the most unhealthy strands of gay male culture are about the worship of the perfect young male body. But actually all gay men get old and we don't have perfect bodies and that culture's as unhealthy in its way as that of the model culture which only shows clothes on women who are utterly different from ordinary people. But the culture of pride can help us overcome such crushing stereotypes and learn to love all people for the way that they are. We don't know who was the author of the letter to the Hebrews and we don't know who they were writing to, but we do know that they were a persecuted people. They were under pressure for their faith and they faced the risk and the uncertainty that went with that. So many Christians all around the world still face it today. We don't, though we face a more insidious difficulty that I'll come back to a bit later on. And I want to say three simple things from that letter which I hope will encourage you all this Pride Month. And the first is this, verse 7 from our reading. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Some of those believers for whom the letter was written were thinking of giving up their faith. The writer tells them what Jesus has done for them and how in detail his life and sacrifice has opened up a new and living way to God. He, let's be honest, it probably was a he, urges them to be faithful as Christ was faithful to the purposes of God. And in return for this fidelity, every Christian has the promise of the steadfastness of Jesus Christ, never failing or forsaking us. Jesus is the same, no matter what we're going through. Jesus is the same whether we've been put down or abused, discriminated against or disrespected. Jesus is the same in the wealthiest homes and the worst hovels in the land. And actually, Jesus is the same for bad people, for the abusers and the fascists, the th thugs and the domestically violent. And he can save, as the Bible puts it, to the uttermost, but they have to want to change. So however you are today, Jesus is there for you and he is unchangingly wonderful and loving. Second thing, people who are put upon in life, for whatever reason, also know about life's disappointments. They know its limitations. They understand that having it all is an illusion. Actually, having any of it would be progress for some folk. But there are lots of people who foolishly imagine they can control life and can build a security around themselves. But nothing is secure in life. Sicknesses come, financial disaster comes, a pandemic comes, marriages fail, families break up. We can't control everything. And sometimes it feels like we can't control anything. And then when someone dies, people get angry with God. Why? We all die. Accidents happen. Illness may strike. But because of the Jesus who's overcome death, we have, as it says in Jeremiah, a future and a hope. But it won't be realised in this life. Hebrews tells us to look forward and look up with hope. We know, verse 13, that we have no lasting city. We are looking for the city that is to come. And in that city, the limitations of this life are lost in the wonder and the glory and the fullness of God, so that all pain, pain and crying and mourning have passed away. And so too has humiliation and disrespect and discrimination. The sad thing is that the very community that should be aiming to model its life on the city that is to come, the Church of Jesus Christ, is nowadays known for its inability to care for some of those who are abused and put down, and among them LGBTI plus Christians. Our family, our home, becomes a place where, at best, we are tolerated. And that's one of the most painful things about being an LGBTI plus Christian. So how can we respond? Well, I think there are two things we have to do, and one is the root of protest and visibility, the way of pride, if you like. It is, I hope, a God-given ability to acknowledge publicly who we are and to refuse the put-downs and to make a clear stand for equal treatment under the law. But the second way is here in Hebrews, verse 16. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Like every single Christian, we are called to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, to share what we have, to be salt and light, and to make the world a better place for others. 
It may feel hard. It may be hard for us to do this, but it is our calling and our duty. And because we do it for him who gave everything for us, then we can discover, as the old prayer puts it, that serving for the sake of Christ, even at times when it's very difficult and we don't really want to do it, is actually the route to perfect freedom. As friends often remind me, there is always someone so much worse off than yourself. We can all always do good for others for Jesus' sake. Well, I better stop before I get into trouble, but I wish you all a great Pride Month and I hope uh, this has been a little bit of a help and I wish you God's richest blessing on you and on everybody that you love and who's close to you and important to you. And thank you very much for listening. Hello my dear friends and welcome to St John the Baptist Felix though, or the Vicarage Garden. We are one of the many communities up and down the country where everybody is welcome all year round, not just in Pride Month. The flags of inclusion you see behind me are flown frequently from our flagpole. Occasionally we get in trouble for it, but it's the kind of trouble we enjoy. We hope that today has been a good service for you. You found some comfort and a place where you can grow and know you are loved. Now let me give you a blessing. When you feel lonely, may you remember this community here. When you need prayer, may you remember this community is here for you. When you need a place to lean into and know others will meet you in the name of Jesus, may you remember this community is here. And may the peace that comes with the knowledge of community, shared endeavour, and a fully inclusive common understanding be with you always by the Spirit left with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace, go in kindness, Go in love, go in faith, leave the day, the day behind us, the day is done, go in grace, let us go into the dark, not afraid, not alone, let us hope. By some good pleasure Safely to Arrive at home Let us hope By some good pleasure Safely to Arrive at home Dancing Queen Friday night and the lights are low Looking out for a place to go Where they play the right music Getting in the swing You've got to look the king Anybody can be that guy Night is young and the music's high. Feel the rhythm of music. Everything is fine. You're in the mood for dance. And when you get the chance, you are the dancing queen. Young and sweet, only 17. 
dancing queen Feel the beat of the tambourine You can dance, you can jive Have the time of your life See that girl, watch that scene Digging the dancing queen Turn it on Watch them burn and then you're gone Anyone will do When you're in the mood for dance And when you get the chance You are the dancing queen Young and sweet, only seventeen and queen feel the beat of the tambourine you can dance you can just having the time of your life see that girl watch that scene digging the dancing queen 